So we have a couple questions regarding uh, surgery side effects from our YouTube channel. This person is wondering, is there any way to not damage the nerve bundles during surgery? In fact, they're wondering if all treatments damage nerve bundles. There is something called uh, nerve sparing surgery, which is sort of assumed when people undergo a modern radi radical prostatectomy that they're going to attempt to do nerve sparing surgery. That um, there are situations where doctors are operating on people where the cancer's got out the edge of the gland and they're not going to try and do nerve sparing in those individuals. Sadly, I don't know why they even consider surgery uh, because there are certainly other options such as uh, radiation which um, give at least some hope of retaining normal sexual function afterwards. But for the most part, any standard treatment that is administered to cure prostate cancer uh, involves targeting the whole prostate. And as a result, the nerve bundles, which are right on the surface of the gland, are at risk for being damaged. And this occurs to variable degrees depending on the different types of treatments that you consider, uh, surgery and radiation and the other options that are out there. The only way to uh, sidestep this, of course, is to uh, think about some sort of focal therapy. And I believe we've talked about focal therapy before. But if uh, you're able to target the tumor in the prostate, uh, then oftentimes you can at least spare one of the nerve bundles. Prostate's very small, and if you have uh, a, a small tumor on one side of the gland, it's still possible that you'll damage the nerve bundle on that side of the prostate where the cancer is, but you'll be able to completely spare the other side. Surgical studies where they spare one nerve, nerve bundle versus two show uh, you know, much better outcomes in men that spare two nerve bundles, but they do still retain some function if they, can, if, if they do spare one nerve bundle. So I think that the answer is to determine if uh, the, the patient is a candidate for focal therapy. Focal therapy is a very new area and it's hard to find qualified, uh, bona fide uh, practitioners that you know can deliver the type of treatment you need, but uh, it's a very logical next step for the really the last hope for side effect free prostate cancer because most of the methodologies that use radiation now are not damaging urinary function, they're not damaging rectal function, and we're just left with a risk of erectile function problems. Sparing at least one nerve bundle and treating a section of the prostate rather than the whole gland is, is uh, I think, is going to be the future. So speaking of surgery side effects, we have a patient who's experiencing um, a large amount of urinary incontinence. And so they're wondering what treatments are there after they've already had surgery, they've already had radiation, and they're experiencing this side effect. There aren't a lot of options. Uh, there's this, something called a sling procedure, which seems to be um, uh, generating less and less enthusiasm. And then, of course, there are artificial sphincters, which are surgically implanted cuffs that are put around the urethra that have a, a switch literally in, that's placed in the scrotum there's a pump that's placed intra-abdominally that will uh, cause this cuff to inflate and uh, squeeze the urethra and stop the flow of urine. These are pretty successful, and uh, like any operation, there are compli potential complications, and uh, it's not going to work in everybody. But uh, for those in whom it is effective, it can be uh, a dramatic improvement in quality of life. How long does it typically last? Do they have to get it replaced at some point? I think they're, they're pretty durable. Again, not everyone that has one will have a successful outcome. But for those that do, they can easily continue functioning for 10 or more years. When you say not everyone, do you have like a percentage, like two-thirds will do well with it? What have you seen regarding your practice? Yeah, I'd say two-thirds to three-fourths of uh, people uh, that are candidates. I mean, some men are are. Better better candidates for operative corrective procedures than others. Uh, and so if you take people that are good candidates, uh, you'd probably have uh, happy, um, satisfied customers maybe in about four out of five people. And what would make somebody a good candidate? Well, I think it has to, to do, I mean, I think it's better if someone hasn't been radiated, if uh, that would be one thing. Uh, Radiated, radiated tissues don't heal as well. Uh, some people have already had other procedures done, and uh, so, so to go back a second or a third time to try and get something fixed, it doesn't bode as well as someone who's you know a, a fresh case. Younger people rather than older people, uh, there's a lot of variables. You mentioned the sling procedure. What is that? Well, it's a less involved uh, operation where they... Um, they try and put a, a mesh across the pubic bone area, and it kind of creates a kink in the urethra that functions sort of like a sphincter. I think people that have milder cases of incontinence may benefit from that uh, type of an operation. So is a 
the average urologist trained in, you know, giving sling procedures or performing artificial uh, sphincter implants? They are. Uh, but like any operation, I think patients uh, are wise to seek out someone that's made this more of a specialty and is doing a, a lot of the same operation over and over. Uh, so that they are very facile and have good skills. And what would be your minimum number of operations you would think that would be decent? Well, I don't think of a minimum number of operations. What I think of is a, a doctor who has developed a reputation for being excellent at, that, at this particular procedure. If they're just doing it in their spare time, then the outcomes are not going to be as good. Hey, everybody. It's me and my dog, Hunter. We're giving him treats over here. But yeah, go ahead and check out his Instagram at Sir Hunter the Dow, and go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer videos every week, yes we do.